Well, good morning and welcome back to another week of Matins in the Morning. It is Monday, February 5th. It's the Memorial of St. Agatha. My name is Nathan. I'm joined by Carrie this morning. And we're coming to you as always from the St. Thomas More House of Prayer, where it is our mission to pray and promote the Liturgy of the Hours. To find out more about our retreat center and the work that we do, you can go over to our website at liturgyofthehours.org. If you've been praying with us, you know that uh, we're in Volume 3 of the Liturgy of the Hours 4 volume set. So I'm going to take us through our page numbers that we'll need this morning. You can find these as well uh, just below the video in the description. Our uh, opening hymn, the Antiphons and the Psalms, will take from the current day of the Psalter, and those will begin on page 702. Our first reading and responsory is in the proper of seasons, beginning on 172. And lastly, our second reading, responsory, and concluding prayer will be proper for St. Agatha, Virgin and Martyr, and that will begin at the bottom of page 1364. So we'll begin as we always do with our prayer that we uh, pray in preparation for praying the divine office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Open, O Lord, my mouth to bless your holy name. Cleanse my heart from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten my understanding and kindle my affections, that I may worthily, attentively, and devoutly say this office, and so deserve to be heard before the presence of your divine majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in union with that divine intention with which you praise God while you are on earth, I offer to you this hour. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. O God of truth, prepare our minds to hear and heed your holy word. Fill every heart that longs for you with your mysterious presence, Lord. O mighty Father, with your Son, and blessed Spirit, hear our prayer. Teach us to love eternal truth and seek its freedom everywhere. <coughs> Show me your mercy, Lord, and keep me safe. Lord, do not reprove me in your anger. Punish me not in your rage. Have mercy on me, Lord, I have no strength. Lord, heal me, my body is racked, my soul is racked with pain. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, Lord, rescue my soul. Save me in your merciful love, for in death no one remembers you. From the grave, who can give you praise? I am exhausted with my groaning. Every night I drench my pillow with tears. I bedew my bed with weeping. My eye wastes away with grief. I have grown old, surrounded by my foes. Leave me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord will accept my prayer. All my foes will retire in confusion, foiled and suddenly confounded. Glory to the Father, <coughs> and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show me your mercy, Lord, and, and keep, keep me, me safe. safe. The poor, poor are not alone in their distress. distress. God, God is, is here, here to help them. them. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will recount all your wonders. I will rejoice in you and be glad, and sing psalms to your name, O Most High. See how my enemies turn back, how they stumble and perish before you. You upheld the justice of my cause. You sat enthroned, judging with justice. You have checked the nations, destroyed the wicked. You have wiped out their name forever and ever. The foe is destroyed, eternally ruined. You uprooted their cities. Their memory has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has set up his throne for judgment. He will, rule the ju he will judge the world with justice. He will judge the peoples with his truth. For the oppressed, let the Lord be a stronghold, a stronghold in times of distress. 
Those who know your name will trust you. You will never forsake those who seek you. The poor are not alone in their glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The The poor poor are are not alone alone in their their distress. distress. God God is is here here to help help them. them. I will will be be the herald herald of your praises, praises, Lord, where where the people of Zion Zion gather. Sing psalms to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim his mighty works among the peoples. For the avenger of blood has remembered them, has not forgotten the cry of the poor. Have pity on me, Lord, see my sufferings. You who save me from the gates of death that I may recount all your praise at the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your saving help. The nations have fallen in the pit which they made, their feet caught in the snare they laid. The Lord has revealed himself and given judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. Let the wicked go down among the dead, all the nations forgetful of God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten nor the hopes of the poor be in vain. Arise, Lord, let men not prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Lord, strike them with terror. Let the nations know they are but men. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will will be be the the herald of of your praises, praises, Lord, where where the people of Zion gather. gather. Give me insight, Lord, to know your will. Then I will cherish it with all my heart. Our first reading on page 172. From the letter to the Galatians. You have heard, I know, the story of my former way of life in Judaism. You know that I went to extremes in persecuting the church and tried to destroy it. I made progress in Jewish observance far beyond most of my contemporaries, in my excess of zeal to live out all the traditions of my ancestors. But the time came when he who had set me apart before I was born and called me by his favor chose to reveal his son to me, that I might spread among the Gentiles the good tidings concerning him. Immediately, without seeking human advisors or even going to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before me, I went off to Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. Three years after that, I went up to Jerusalem to get to know Caiaphas, with whom I stayed 15 days. I did not meet any other apostles except James, the brother of the Lord. I declare before God that what I have just written is true. Thereafter, I entered the regions of Syria and Cilicia. The communities of Christ in Judea had no idea what I looked like. They had only heard that he who was formerly persecuting us is now preaching the faith he tried to destroy, and they gave glory to God on my account. Then after 14 years, I went up to Jerusalem again with Barnabas, this time taking Titus with me. I went prompted by revelation, and I laid out for their scrutiny the gospel as I present it to the Gentiles, all this in private conferences with the leaders, to make sure the course I was pursuing or had pursued was not useless. Not even Titus, who was with me, was ordered to undergo circumcision despite his being a Greek. Certain false claimants to the title of brother were smuggled in. They wormed their way into the group to spy on the freedom we enjoy in Christ Jesus and thereby to make slaves of us, but we did not submit to them for a moment. We resisted so that the truth of the gospel might survive intact for your benefit. Those who were regarded as important, however, and it makes no difference to me how prominent they were, God plays no favorites, made me add nothing. On the contrary, recognizing that I had been entrusted with the gospel for the uncircumcised, just as Peter was for the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter as his apostle among the Jews had been at work in me for the Gentiles, and recognizing, too, the favor bestowed on me, Those who were the acknowledged pillars, James, Cephas, and John, gave Barnabas and me the hand clasp of fellowship, signifying that we would go to the Gentiles as they to the Jews. The only stipulation was that we should be mindful of the poor, the one thing I was making every effort to do. 
By the grace of God, I am what I am. His grace in me has not been in vain. It was the power of God which made Peter an apostle for the Jewish people, and it was his power which made me an apostle for the Gentiles. His grace in me has not been in vain. <clears throat> Second reading is proper for St. Agatha on page 1365. From homily on St. Agatha by St. Methodius of Sicily. My fellow Christians, our annual celebration of a martyr's feast has brought us together. She achieved renown in the early church for her noble victory. She is well known now as well, for she continues to triumph through her divine miracles, which occur daily and continue to bring glory to her name. She is indeed a virgin, for she was born of the divine word, God's only son, who also experienced death for our sake. John, a master of God's word, speaks of this. He gave the power to become children of God to everyone who received him. The woman who invites us to this banquet is both a wife and virgin. To use the analogy of Paul, she is the bride who has been betrothed to one husband, Christ. A true virgin, she wore the glow of a pure conscience and the crimson of the Lamb's blood for her cosmetics. Again and again she meditated on the death of her eager lover. For her, Christ's death was recent, his blood was still moist, her robe is the mark of her faithful witness to Christ. It bears the indelible marks of his crimson blood and the shining threads of her eloquence. She offers to all who come after her these treasures of her eloquent confession. Agatha, the name of our saint, means good. She was truly good, for she lived as a child of God. She was also given as the gift of God, the source of all goodness to her bridegroom Christ and to us, for she grants us a share in her goodness. What can give greater good than the sovereign good? Whom could any one find more worthy of celebration with hymns of praise than Agatha? Agatha, her goodness coincides with her name and way of life. She won a good name by her noble deeds, and by her name she points to the nobility of those deeds. Agatha, her mere name, wins all men over to her company. She teaches them by her example to hasten with her to the true good, God alone. But as for me, helped by the Lord, I shall stand firm in proclaiming his praises. He has become my salvation and my consoler. In his mercy, the sinless <clears throat> Lord has consecrated his servant, for she remained pure in his sight. He has become my salvation and my consoler. Let us pray. Lord, let your let forgiveness, forgiveness be won for us, us by the pleading of St. Agatha, who found favor with you by her chastity and by her courage in suffering death for the gospel. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. We'll now conclude, as we always do with our prayer that follows the divine office, to the most holy, holy and undivided Trinity, Trinity to, to the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, to the fruitful virginity of the most blessed and glorious Mary, Mary ever virgin, and to, and to the, the whole company of the saints, the saints be everlasting praise, honor, and glory by all creatures, and to us remission of all our sins, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father, and blessed, and blessed be the breasts which nourish Christ, Christ the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us uh, for another day of Matins in the Morning. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber to our channel, so hit the subscribe button, like the video, share with us a comment. Uh, also, uh, in, just in case you don't know, we have a couple other programs uh, that we're featuring on our YouTube channel. Uh, one is Breviary Basics. We've come out with a couple episodes of that. Uh, they're just short instructional videos on the Liturgy of the Hours. And the other uh, video, we just had our uh, first video launched last week, and uh, that's Coffee and the Hours, where we give uh, just uh, divine office reflections on uh, the writings of the saints and popes, church documents. Right now, we're working through uh, a book, uh, two chapters in a book, 
uh, by Blessed Columba Marmion on the Divine Office. So if you haven't seen that already, uh, you can find that uh, here on our YouTube, YouTube channel. But uh, thanks again for joining us today on this Memorial of St. Agatha. Have a great day and God bless.